You see, the monk and the joker, these two seemingly disparate roles in society, the sacred and the profane, share a unique space outside the prescribed social norms. The monk, in his ascetic discipline, removes himself from the common tapestry of society. He is an outlaw, not in the sense of a criminal, but as someone who resides beyond societal structures. This is not a position of lower stature, rather it's an elevated state of being. You see, the monk, in his departure from society, is making a statement, a statement that the normal pursuits of life Wealth, fame, and power are not the ultimate goals. The monk, like a solitary lighthouse standing firm amidst stormy seas, serves as a beacon, a reminder of the transcendent potential within each of us. He has chosen a path less traveled, a path that ascends towards a higher reality. Imagine, if you will, a bird that leaves the safety of the ground to take flight. It faces the unknown, it braves the winds, it soars higher and higher. It's risky. It's uncertain. But oh, the view from up there, the freedom, the transcendence, it's unparalleled. That's the monk for you, my friends. Take, for instance, the early Buddhist monks during the time of the Buddha. They cloaked themselves in saffron robes, attire typically associated with criminals, the outcasts, the lower strata of society. Yet, paradoxically, these monks were revered. They wore the symbols of societal rejection, while their spirituality placed them in a position of respect. They were outcasts, but not beneath society. They were above it. It's like a bird soaring above the hustle and bustle of a busy marketplace, uninvolved yet fully aware. Fast forward to the modern world, where the dichotomy between worldly engagement and spiritual withdrawal comes even more complex. It's like trying to hear a whisper in the middle of a rock concert, yet the monk like the whisper, exists, subtly reminding us of the transcendence possible. Now, think of the joker, the fool, the trickster. His function in society is profoundly significant, yet often overlooked. The harshest critique comes not from stern rebuke or harsh admonition, but through laughter. The joker doesn't openly deride or mock. He isn't a slapstick comedian extracting cheap laughs. Instead, he tickles our consciousness, making us laugh about matters we usually hold sacred. It's like a soft breeze that makes a rigid tree sway, subtly but unmistakably shaking its foundation. The Joker, our beloved trickster, dances amidst the chaos of the world, unafraid of the discordant notes. Unbothered by the cacophony, he prances around with a knowing smile and a twinkle in his eye, inviting us to see the absurdity in the seriousness, the laughter in the tears, the dance in the chaos. Consider a painter who splashes colors randomly on a canvas to an untrained eye. It might seem chaotic and unsensical, but step back, look again, and you might see a pattern, a design, a story unfold. That's the world the Joker lives in, a world that celebrates the paradoxes, the contradictions, and the beautiful messiness of life. The Joker, with his laughter and mockery, isn't trying to belittle our beliefs or values. Instead, He's inviting us to take a step back, to loosen the grip, to soften the edges. It's like a wind that rustles the leaves, not to uproot the tree, but to make it dance. The fool, in his wisdom, sees all societal structures, norms, and institutions as games. He perceives the world as a grand play, a cosmic drama. And so when individuals become solemn, serious, and self-important in their roles, the fool can't help but giggle. His laughter is a gentle reminder that life, at its core, is a play. This is not to trivialize life, but to illuminate its intrinsic playfulness. Life, ladies and gentlemen, isn't a problem to be solved, a puzzle to be pieced together, or a destination to be reached. It's a melody to be reached, it's a melody to be sung, a rhythm to be danced, a game to be played. The joker and the monk, in their unique ways, remind us of this profound truth. Just as the music exists, not to reach a climactic note, but to weave a harmonious melody. Life exists not to reach a particular goal, but to experience the journey, the ups and downs, the twists and turns, the dance of existence. Imagine life as a symphony. Each event, each moment is a note in this grand composition. Music doesn't aim for an end. It's a journey in itself. Each note resonates with the ones that came before and the ones that follow. It's like a river flowing not to reach the ocean, 
but simply to flow. This dance of life, this cosmic symphony, is profoundly purposeful in its apparent purposelessness. Just like a seed growing into a tree, one might argue that the seed's purpose is to become a tree, but then the tree produces more seeds, each capable of becoming a new tree. The cycle continues endlessly. It's not a linear journey, but an eternal dance in this grand game of hide and seek, where we are both the seekers and the hiders. But let's remember to dance, to laugh, and to step back and appreciate the view. And most importantly, enjoy the game. Because in the end, that's what life is. A beautiful, messy, chaotic, harmonious game. And we're all players, dancing to the rhythm of the cosmos.